This video is about Schottky diode frequency doublers. I have two frequency doublers. They are within these blue areas. It's a 90 degree hybrid for 10 megahertz that splits into two signals 90 degrees out of phase and then a level 23 Schottky mixer from mini circuits. Output is 20 megahertz and there is also a DC because it's a sum frequency 20 and a difference frequency which is DC. But because the phase shift is 90 degrees the DC voltage happens to be very close to zero so I don't have to bother about it. I have in a previous video uh, shown more details about these multipliers and this is the conversion gain as a function of the input level. So maximum is plus 27 and then there is a saturation of about 2 decibels. The frequency doublers are in an uh, interferometer setup. Means start at plus 30 dBm. There is an attenuator so I can test lower levels. A hybrid for 10 MHz that splits the signal into plus 27 dBm into this one. And then a phase adjustment thing. It's a box with various cables and then a phase shifter with the capacitors. Uh, that allows me to set the phase here uh, for the phase at the output of the interferometer which is here uh, for the signals to have the correct phase at 20 megahertz. Then after the one of the uh, frequency doublers there is an amplitude adjust with a stepped attenuator with 0.2 dB steps and an analog attenuator which actually is capacitors so it also shifts the phase to some extent. Uh, on the other side there is a 1 dB attenuator to balance this amplitude adjust thing. And then there is a coupler into which I can inject a signal from a signal generator. And then a second coupler uh, from which I can extract whatever signal is going through here. It's the 20 dB carrier plus whatever I injected by this thing. And then there is a 20 dB attenuator uh, and then the STRIP with which I can set the level of this signal to an exact level below the carrier. Usually maybe 70 decibels or something like that. Uh, the other, uh, what goes through the coupler goes into the other leg of the uh, uh, interferometer. So what comes out, these are at 15 dBm at full signal level, both of them means one output is plus 18 dBm, 20 MHz. The other is essentially zero. That's where I analyze the noise, the different signal, which is what is added by the two frequency doublers. Because carrier and noise from here is balanced and comes out in the sum output. Here I have an impedance match box a 30 dB of attenuation and then the oscilloscope and then this 20 MHz signal I used it for the triggering of the oscilloscope. This impedance match has to be set uh, for the impedance oh I forgot something at the noise output of the uh, interferometer there is a stepped attenuator from Hewlett Packard uh, and when this is changed, it's very important that the impedance uh, that it looks into here from the hybrid is 50 ohms. And that is set by the impedance match here, because this low noise amplifier has no has, uh, noiseless feedback. 
So changing the impedance that it looks into by this impedance match, I can set the input impedance here to be exactly 50 ohms. And that is because I want the accuracy of this stepped attenuator. And also, uh, I have to set the impedance that the low noise amplifier is looking into uh, to 50 ohms, also when this attenuator is set to zero. And that is done by this impedance adjust, which is on the other side of the hybrid. Now, uh, this impedance match is to make the impedance here the same as the impedance here in order to uh, not send a signal into here and then out here. So everything is isolated and impedances are 50 ohms accurately everywhere. Uh, and the sum signal at 20 MHz is used to trigger the oscilloscope. The noise signal is amplified, a low noise amplifier, it has J310 uh, noiseless feedback inside, gain is 11 dB, and that's the noise level, starts at zero, that means minus 174 dBm per hertz, uh, when this attenuator is set to high attenuation. And then the gain is 11 dB, bandpass filter, lose 1 dB, now it's 10, impedance much, doesn't loss, lose anything that I have to take into account. Then there is an amplifier, AMC 147, brings the level up to 27, that's a little too much, so 6 dB attenuation here, gives the level 21. And then an amplifier with BFR91 in it gives a level of 36. An 8 dB coupler brings the level down to 35. That's suitable for the Perseus. Uh, the noise increment when I uh, connect here uh, the signal uh, as compared to when I connect the dummy load at the input that increment is 17 dB, and that's uh, suitable to have the noise from the Perseus itself not contribute by more than 0.1 dB or so. The 8 dB coupler gives a signal that I bring into the oscilloscope with the 50 ohm termination on the oscilloscope. Here I see the same signal that goes into the Perseus, and I look at this screen when adjusting the amplitude and phase balance of this interferometer. Here is what it looks like. This is the 1 dB attenuator in one leg. And here is the amplitude adjust in the other. The phase adjust looks like this. Switches to select a suitable cable length and then this box with the phase shifter inside. Match boxes look like that. And this is the frequency doubler, the hybrid, and then the Schottky diode mixer. Here is the Linrod screen. I have injected the signal at 19.7 MHz, 300 kHz below the carrier at 20. The carrier is well balanced, so this is mostly the noise. Uh, but there is a problem. I have something here that looks like third order intermodulation, but it isn't. That problem is caused by the coupler here. The isolation isn't more than about 20 decibels, so when I send a signal this way, I also send a signal this way and it goes into the Schottky mixer where there is a lot of the 20 megahertz. So I get some different frequencies and I get intermodulation in here. This one is running in a non-linear mode now, it's rather saturated. So I will place an impedance match unit here to try to eliminate the 
uh, signal going backwards here. This box will allow me to change the impedance plus minus some significant amount around 50 ohms at 20 megahertz. So now there is an impedance match here uh, for the signal generator, which actually is an 86, what I say, 8657B to get the finer frequency stepping. And uh, on the other side of the coupler, there is this impedance match. And I cannot set it exactly as desired because the impedance required is pretty low here, but it is at least much better than before now. I have calibrated the SDRIP to show zero on the S meter for the 20 megahertz signal. And then the injected at 19.7, which I have here. It comes at minus 80. Oh, minus 80.2. So I have to increase it by 0.2 dB. not fast enough. Minus 79.99. That's close enough to 80. So then I look at the linear screen and click on that 19.7 signal and I want the S meter uh, to show minus 80 for this and I read now minus 20. I had to feed 59.32 here and then I read minus 80 dBm and I have to set the bandwidth to 1 kilohertz. I think it's better to do that. I switched off the signal generator and here comes the noise in a bandwidth of 1 kilohertz. And that is minus 146.9. I moved the signal to 19.8 and I need 0.1 dB more signal. Like that. You see I'm on 19.8 now. Oops. And it says minus 80.04. And in Linrad, uh, it says minus 79.7.3. So I have to change this. Now I read 79.999. So switch off the generator and look for the noise floor. And going from here to here should be about two decibels more. One four five point eight minus one four five point eight. The sideband noise has a maximum here. That's about nineteen point eight eight five, one hundred and fifteen kilohertz from the carrier. So I look at the level here. I have calibrated. No, I have not. I have to do that. Like this. And I switch off the generator. And here comes the maximum noise. Minus 145.0. Means minus one seven five point zero in dBc per hertz, and I'm making a table like that. And I will not show all the measurements because that's going to be boring. 
at the frequency separation of 2 Hz in a bandwidth of 1 Hz. What I see is minus 140.3. So these are the results and I will make a plot of them. And this is what it looks like. I can fit a straight line to the points. We see some inaccuracy problems. This is as much as 3 decibels. And also here. But uh, I'm happy with this. The accuracy is good enough for the purpose. This line is parallel to this line here, which is 1 over f. Uh, here, this noise hump, <laughs> one wonders what happens next here. So, I made a measurement at 1 megahertz, and it comes out like this. The numbers I get at wider separations are a bit unreliable, because the impedance matching units I'm using several of are all narrow banded. I can show that by changing the frequency. I go down here, clicking on this arrow here. So now I can see a little bit of the slope at 200 kilohertz. And now I will switch in the attenuator at the output of the interferometer and look at the noise floor. Well, I go back and place the mouse here and then put in the attenuation. And as you can see, the noise floor goes up, while it goes down here. And that's because when I switch in this attenuator here, the impedance changes significantly, uh, because I have this matchbox here, which makes the impedance exactly 50 ohms on 20 megahertz and several kilohertz around 20 megahertz but not one megahertz away. There it is very different. I am now on the peak 115 kilohertz away from the carrier. And I expect 175. And I read 144.9, that is 174.9. So that's okay. This is one day later. Uh, now I will change the signal levels, uh, inserting 3 decibels of attenuation here. And then of course I have to rebalance because the, mix, the doublers are not identical in the conversion loss. After balancing, the level I see is this. It is 148.6. That is 4 decibels lower, uh, but I changed the signal level by 3 decibels only, so there is some improvement, although not very large. So I will recalibrate at this signal level, and I will wait for a while because it's not quite stable. The temperature is changing now in the mixes that do the frequency multiplication. I have calibrated properly now, <coughs> and the level I see is minus 146.6, and still at 115 kilohertz separation. It seems that the peak has moved a little bit further away, but that's a small effect. Anyway, this means minus 176.6, minus 176, sorry, 
minus 176.6. So it's an improvement by 1.6 dB. Not much, but it goes in the right direction. I calibrated at the separation of 2 kHz and switch off that calibration generator. And I have to wait a little. The bandwidth now is 100 Hz and at 2 kHz I had 168.7 so I should expect uh, 148 something but it is significantly better although I see maybe it's because I'm talking so loud that you have some microphonic things I have to keep quiet while doing the measurement so I verified calibration and then I look at the noise floor minus 153.3 and you can see my voice here causing problems <laughs> I don't know what is vibrating it could be anything the improvement at lower power is much larger at the separation of 2 kilohertz so I will look much closer. A measurement at minus 155 uh, hertz is not possible because of all the spurs that you can see here. They are caused by the nickel in the BNC connectors. So I will look a little bit closer to the carrier. This is at a separation of 10 Hz. You can see on the S meter graph, now I am at minus 153.7. Uh, before here, that was before I shifted the frequency a couple of tenths of a Hz to avoid to move this spur outside the filter. It's very hard to measure noise when there are so many spurs and I cannot do anything about them. They originate in local magnetic fields interacting with the BNC connectors and I don't want to replace all of them with ones using silver instead of gold. I have tried to measure the noise at about 155 hertz separation but I failed on that you can see clearly that the noise level is higher here than it is here and here is closer to the carrier so the magnetic field and all the spurs has a component of noise in it presumably that is the reason and actually the measurement here if I read it out on a properly calibrated system I see minus 157 and as compared to what I found at the higher power level I had minus 160 so it means when I make the carrier weaker uh, of course the noise goes weaker but the spurs stay the same so uh, I lose precision. This is a separation of 2 Hz in a bandwidth of 1 Hz. And then I see the noise floor at minus 146.3. And maybe decimals are not really so reliable. I mean, the noise floor is sloping fairly quickly here. But even a narrower bandwidth makes things slower, and I think this is good enough. And it looks consistent with the measurement at the full power. Improvement is about 6 decibels at this point. I have reduced the level by 3 more dB, so this attenuator is now at 6 decibels. It means I am now at 
uh, plus 21 dBm into the frequency doublers and going from here to here uh, conversion efficiency proves by 1 dB so the carrier should have been reduced by 2 decibels but the noise at 2 Hz separation has been reduced by 3 decibels it means the dBc per hertz should have improved by 1 dB. I have to recalibrate and do a proper measurement at some different frequency separations. This is almost 10 hertz away. I have to avoid this spur here. So I cannot put exactly 10 hertz. This is 9.5 or something. Uh, the level I can see is minus 154.4 that's not very different from what I had at 3 decibels higher power 154.4 and also at 2 Hertz there is a small improvement from 24 dBm to 21 dBm input power I will look at a few more data points. Here is 520 Hz separation. And you can see here a little bit where there is pure noise floor. Means while I'm not talking or banging the table. Uh, the level there was like this, minus 160.3 means minus 170.3 in one hertz bandwidth. Well, I wrote 70.2 from a previous measurement, and that's accurate enough. As compared with the full power, uh, there is a 13 dB improvement at 6 decibels lower power into the frequency multipliers. At 2 kHz separation in the bandwidth of 10 Hz I can see a level of minus 164.3. I have stopped the oscillator by removing the feedback cable and then I see minus 166.7. That doesn't differ much from what I saw when the oscillator was running, 164.3. So I'm approaching a level where the sideband noise is similar to the room temperature noise. Because the noise figure of the amplifier I'm using is about 1 dB only. So it's not meaningful to study uh, greater frequency separations than this. Here is the sideband noise I see from the frequency doublers. At 27 dBm uh, the noise is almost 10 decibels higher than it is at 24 dBm. And then going down 3 more dB improves very little. And I can see at the curve of the conversion gain is minus 10 dB here at the peak. That is at uh, plus 17 or plus 18 dBm. And 21 here gives nearly the full conver uh, conversion uh, loss or gain remains what sign you want going further up uh, reduces the uh, conversion gain or increases the conversion loss by up to 2 decibels at uh, 27 dBm and that is associated with a lot of noise so uh, Running at 24 or maybe 23 or 22 dBm, uh, that gives a conversion gain of minus uh, 
10 and a half decibels or so. That's the optimum for this kind of frequency doublers. At high frequency separations there is this noise hump uh, when running at full power. Uh, it's not so evident when running at lower power levels because I'm hitting the limitations of the system. Means I'm hitting the minus 174 uh, dBc dBm per hertz, that is room temperature. The noise figure is only 1 dB on the amplifier.